Hey everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video we're going to look at indeterminate forms and Le Hapital's rule. So earlier in the course we encountered expressions of this form, 0 divided by 0, or any variation of infinity divided by infinity. So it could be infinity divided by negative infinity, uh, negative infinity divided by infinity, and so on. These are called indeterminate forms. And they did not necessarily guarantee that a limit exists. Nor do they indicate that the limit, what the limit is, even if one does exist. So we encountered these indeterminate forms when we attempted to rewrite the expression using some variation of algebraic techniques, factoring, multiplying by a radical conjugate, or we divided the numerator and denominator by the highest power of x that occurred in the denominator. So for example, we encountered this earlier in the course, a type of limit as x approaches infinity, x squared subtract x divided by x squared subtract 1. Well, we notice that we, if we substitute in 1 in for x, it is not a direct limit because we would indicate we would have an indeterminate form. So the idea that we used earlier in the class was Let's see if we can factor the numerator and denominator and see if there's any common factor. The numerator factored is x times x minus 1. The denominator was a difference of squares. And x minus 1 was in common, and that's why we were encountering 0 divided by 0. And we came up with the limit as x approaches 1, x divided by x plus 1. And now it became a direct limit, and we find out that the limit is 1 half. So that was one type of indeterminate form that we encountered. We had 0 divided by 0. Another example would be the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared subtract 1 divided by 2x squared plus 1. So imagine that you're encountering the function y equals x squared minus 1. The function grows um, without bound when x is growing without bound and same for 2x squared plus 1. So this would be an indeterminate form infinity divided by infinity. So the idea was we divided the numerator and denominator by the highest power of x. So x squared divided by x squared would be 1. 1 divided by x squared would be 1 divided by x squared. 2x squared divided by x squared would be 2 and same thing for 1 divided by x squared. And we noted that as x is growing without bound, 1 divided by x squared was approaching 0, and 1 divided by x squared, same, also approaches 0, and so we found out that the limit was 1 half. So these were two types of limits that we encountered previously in the course. There are other methods, and that's what this section is all about, is learning how can you find out the limit without actually having to factor if you encounter an indeterminate form, or dividing the numerator and denominator by the highest power of x that occurs in the denominator. So in this first video, we're going to look at how do you find limits where the indeterminate form is 0 divided by 0, or infinity divided by infinity, or any variation of that. And this method is called L'Hopital's rule, or some people call it L'Hopital's rule. So in this first video, we're going to look at how do you use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate one or two-sided limits for indeterminate forms of the type 0 divided by 0 or infinity divided by infinity, and then find the limit of an indeterminate form or indeterminate product or limit of indeterminate difference or logarithms or exponential functions for indeterminate powers. Those last three will be in the next video. So let's talk about Le Hapital's rule. The first use of Le Hapital's rule will be to calculate limits of rational functions where the numerator and denominator both approach zero or positive or negative infinity. So they will in, they will, we will encounter indeterminate forms. So the theorem. Le Hapital's rule says that both functions, f of x and g of x, need to be differentiable. And since we're using Le Hapital's rule, g prime of x cannot be zero when we are near x equals a, but the derivative could be 0 at x equals a. 
So if the limit of f of x as x approaches a is 0, and the limit of g of x as x approaches a is also 0, or plus or minus infinity for f of x, or plus or minus infinity for g of x, then, then L'Hopital's rule says we can find the limit as long as we have an indeterminate form, we're allowed to use L'Hopital's rule as follows. The limit as x approaches a of a rational function f of x divided by g of x, or any fraction f of x divided by g of x, you can use L'Hopital's rule, and the notation that I learned when I took calculus was L apostrophe h to indicate that these limits are equal because of L'Hopital's rule. And the L'Hopital's rule says you can take the derivative of the numerator, which is f of x, and get f prime of x. And you can take the derivative of g of x and get g prime of x, and the limit is still approaching a. This limit, these limits are equal. Um, if the limit on the right side exists, or is infinity or negative infinity. So don't confuse, do not confuse this with the quotient rule. We're not going to, we are not looking at the entire fraction, f of x divided by g of x, and taking the entire derivative. We're only taking the derivative of the numerator, and then taking the derivative of the denominator separately. This is not the quotient rule. So. This is extremely important that you check the conditions regarding the limits of f of x and g of x. You cannot use Le Hapital's rule unless you have an indeterminate form of the type 0 divided by 0 or any variation of infinity divided by infinity. So if you have 1 divided by 0, that you cannot use Le Hapital's rule. And Le Hapital's rule also states that x approaches a in the theorem can be replaced with one-sided limits as you approach a from the left or from the right, or as x approaches infinity or x approaches negative infinity. So the statement will, will hold true for any of those one-sided limits or infinite limits. All right, so let's try example one. Use Le Hapital's rule to find the following limits that result in an indeterminate form. So number one, we're going to find the limit as x approaches one of natural log of x divided by x minus 1. So keep in mind, we're going to check Le Hapital's rules um, conditions, or the conditions to use Le Hapital's rule first. So note that the limit as x approaches 1 of natural log of x, that would give you natural log of 1, which is 0, and that the limit as x approaches 1 of the denominator, x minus 1, is also 0. So the conditions for Le Hapital's rule is true, or satisfied. You will have a 0 divided by 0 indeterminate form. So that means we can use Le Hapital's rule to find the, the limit using the derivative of the numerator and derivative of the denominator. So remember, limit notation until you actually substitute in x equals 1. So we take the derivative of the numerator, and we take the derivative of the denominator separately, and keep the limit. x approaches 1. Derivative of natural log of x is 1 divided by x. Derivative of x subtract 1 is 1. So this becomes a limit as x approaches 1 of 1 divided by x. And of course that limit is just 1. So this is, much, this is a much faster way to find the limit. And keep in mind, this function you could not even factor to find the limit. So this is one where you would have to use Le Hapital's rule. Let's try a different problem. Number two. Well, let's check. So simplify before finding out what the limit is. So we, we can multiply by the um, reciprocal of the denominator. It's 3 divided by x to the 2 thirds.
the denominator. Oh, by zero, or infinity divided by infinity. So the limit should be limit as x approaches pi from the left of sine of x divided by 1 minus cosine of x. The numerator gives us 0. And the denominator gives us 2, and that is 0. So the limit as x approaches pi from the left, the true limit is 0. That is the correct answer. Let's say you use Le Hapital's rule incorrectly. So we know that Le Hapital's rule's conditions are not satisfied, but let's say we force our way to use Le Hapital's rule incorrectly. So going back to the original function, if we mistakenly use the Hapital's rule, we'll have the limit as x approaches pi from the left. Derivative of the numerator is cosine of x. Derivative of the denominator is sine of x. And the limit is cotangent of x. That's cotangent of pi, which does not exist. Let's finish up this first video on the fact that you can use Le Hapital's rule more than once in order to remove an indeterminate form, 0 divided by 0 or infinity divided by infinity, or any variation of that. Let's finish up this first video um, noticing the fact that we can use Le Hapital's rule more than once in order to remove an indeterminate form. So if you result, if you ever have 0 divided by 0 or infinity divided by infinity or any variation of, of that indeterminate form, then you can use Le Hapital's rule multiple times. So to find the limit as x approaches a of f of x divided by g of x, you can continuously differentiate the numerator and denominator as long as you still get an indeterminate form at x equals a. So however, as soon as one of those derivatives do not result in an indeterminate form, then you must stop differentiating. So let's try a couple problems where we can use Le Hapital's rule multiple times. So here's a classic example. The limit as x approaches infinity, and we've seen something similar to this type of problem um, earlier in the course. Negative 5x cubed subtracts 7x squared plus 6x plus 10, and that numerator is divided by 4x cubed, subtract 3x squared, and then subtract 12. So notice that the numerator the limit as x approaches infinity of the numerator negative 5x cubed subtract 7x squared plus 10x or 6x plus 10 this will approach negative infinity so this is a polynomial function and it's determined by the leading term the leading term is an odd exponent and the leading coefficient is negative so the graph will fall as you um, as x goes off to infinity. So y values are going towards negative infinity. And same reason, the limit as x approaches infinity of the denominator, 4x cubed, subtract 3x squared, subtract 12. 
This is a polynomial function, odd degree, leading coefficients positive. The y values will grow without bound as x approaches infinity. So this gives us an indeterminate form, negative infinity divided by infinity. So we can use L'Hopital's rule to find out this limit by taking the derivative of the numerator and taking the derivative of the denominator. So x approaches infinity. The derivative of the numerator, negative 15 x squared, subtract 14 x, then plus 6, divided by derivative of the denominator is 12 x squared, subtract 6 x. So notice that if we look at the numerator and denominator separately, this first function is a polynomial, it's a quadratic function, the parabola is opening down. So as x goes to infinity, the numerator is going towards negative infinity, and the denominator is going towards positive infinity. So we also have an indeterminate form once again. So if it's still in, if it's still in indeterminate form, we can still use L'Hopital's rule. So limit as x approaches infinity. Let's take another derivative of the numerator. The numerator derivative would be negative 30x subtract 14 divided by 24x subtract 6. So we now are down to a linear function in the numerator and denominator. Notice that if x is growing arbitrarily large, the numerator will approach negative infinity, and the denominator is approaching positive infinity once again. So we can use L'Hopital's rule a third time. Limit as x approaches infinity. Derivative of negative 30x subtract 14 is negative 30. And the derivative of the denominator is 24. And now, notice that negative 30 divided by 24 is uh, negative 5 fourths. And now it's no longer an indeterminate form, so stop differentiating. And the limit is negative 5 fourths. Which we have learned before, previously in our class and also in pre-calculus, that the limit of a rational function where x approaches infinity or negative infinity is the ratio of the leading coefficients if the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same. And we get negative 5 fourths as we should. So this is an example of using L'Hopital's rule three times. All right, number two. Let's try finding the limit as x approaches infinity, or x approaches zero, of tangent of x minus x divided by x to the third power. So let's check the L'Hopital's rule again, that the conditions are satisfied. The limit of the numerator as x approaches 0, it, of tangent of x minus x, tangent of 0 minus 0 is 0, and the limit as x approaches 0 of the denominator is also 0. So L'Hopital's rules conditions are satisfied. We can find the limit by using L'Hopital's rule by taking the derivative of the numerator and derivative of the denominator separately. So keep the limit as x approaches 0. Derivative of tangent of x is secant squared of x. Derivative of x is 1, so minus 1. Derivative of the denominator is 3x squared. Now notice that secant of 0 is 1. So secant squared of x or secant squared of 0 would also be 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0 in the numerator. And 3 times 0 squared would also be 0 in the denominator. So the function still produces an indeterminate form as x approaches 0. So let's use L'Hopital's rule a second time. Take the derivative of the numerator using the power rule and chain rule. It would be 2 times secant of x times the derivative of secant, which is secant of x times tangent of x. 
derivative of negative 1 is 0, and then the derivative of the denominator is 6x. So this makes it secant, 2 times secant squared times tangent of x in the numerator. And we notice again that secant squared of 0, that's 1, but tangent of 0, that's 0. So the numerator gives us 0, and the denominator is also 0. So L'Hopital's rule can be used again because we still have an indeterminate form, 0 divided by 0. So L'Hopital's rule a third time. So notice that the numerator, you, we would have to use the product rule, and the power rule, and the chain rule to find the derivative. So first function, 2 times secant squared of x, times the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared of x, plus the second function, tangent of x, times the derivative of the first, which would be 4 secant of x, times secant of x, tangent of x, from the chain rule. And this is all divided by the derivative of the denominator, which is just 6. So luckily we can't use Le Hapital's rule a fourth time because the denominator will always be 6. We will not have an indeterminate form any longer. So this is equal to, now it should be a direct limit, substitute in 0 for all the x's in the numerator, 2 times secant squared of 0 times secant squared of 0 plus tangent of 0 times 4 secant of 0 times secant of 0 times tangent of 0 and this is all divided by 6 remember that tangent of 0 is 0 so this entire second term is just 0 so secant of 0 is 1, so secant squared of 0 is also 1, so 2 times 1 squared times another 1 squared, and, or divided by 6, so it looks like the limit will be 1 third. So keep in mind that the y values are approaching 1 third whenever x is approaching 0 for the function tangent of x minus x all divided by x cubed. So this finishes up our first video on using La Hapital's rule involving indeterminate forms 0 divided by 0 and any variation of infinity divided by infinity. If you have any questions about any of the problems that we used La Hapital's rule for, please let me know. Or as you work through the homework, please let me know if you have any questions. And in the next video, we'll look at how do you find limits involving indeterminate powers, products, or differences? So I'll see you at the next video.